What up, peeps? I thought I'd tap in. Uh, it's Sunday afternoon, just leaving the gym, so I'm feeling pretty damn good. I wonder, um, I was talking to a guy earlier today. He was pretty much in the beginning stage of trying to get his, um, take, get control of his situation in court, you know, and his name and stuff like that. And we talk about, you know, I earlier this year, I was speaking more, uh, a lot about trust law and you know, uh, the importance of trust, you know, creating a trust and all the different stuff. And he made a statement. He asked me a question that was extremely valid because I've heard it myself and he just confused the shit out of me when I would hear it. And the question is, how do you put your property inside of a trust? And I used to hear that the key word is put. That's why I put the quotation, the quotation marks around the word put in the title of this video. Because it's like, it's like you taking something, to me it sounds like something you do, like you pick up some tangible object and you place it, you physically take something and place it inside something in the physical sense. And not, um, just, I was disregarding the fact that, you know, that shit used to confuse me when people used to say it like that too, when I used to hear it. And um, now I understand, so I thought, you know, I understand that it's really necessary to make this video to clarify what I mean by putting something inside your trust and how do you actually do that the, the, to help you understand what, it, what we really mean by that is basically trans you're conveying property from one entity to another that's the proper way of saying it you are you conveying your you're changing the ownership of it and I use the, the an analogy like say if you have a car a title to a car that you know it belongs to you. You got the title or whatever. Okay. And you want to change the ownership of that title from your straw man. Cause it's in your straw man name. If you say you own it, technically your straw man owns it. Only entities own these properties. Okay. We conduct business through entities. So living men and women don't own anything. It's the entities that we use. Legally, the entity is what owns it. Of course, you have control of it because you control the entity. But legally, the entity is in the entity's name. So the car is in the entity. The name of is in the name of the straw man. So if you flip that title over, if you have a car and you want to change the the ownership of that car from the straw man's name, you can flip the back of it up. There's a way where you can sign that thing over to another entity and uh, into the ownership of another entity and uh, the um. You write that the entity's name on there, you know, like say if you you selling your car to me and I want to say I want to put it in the name of my trust. I will sign where I where the buyer in the by where the buyer is supposed to sign it. The representative of the buyer. I sign that and I put the name of the entity in which uh, is going to be in the name of. And from that point, I can go and get, you know, if I'm doing it the regular way, not trying to my dry riding privately, you know, all that. We, that's another topic. But say I want to go get, um, you know, insurance. I want to go get tag or register that car in the name of that entity. Then I I will take that title to the to the title to the tag office, and I'm able to get from that point get um, registration in the name of that entity, the entity that I signed on behalf of. Like for example, I did that about a year ago with my LLC, and I put the um, the car in the name of the LLC. Now, so since it's not, it's no longer in the, you know, so it's no longer in the name of the company that I bought it from, the dude who's, uh, who company that belonged to, he actually signed it over to the name of my LLC. And now I signed it on behalf, yeah, I signed my name, you know, I autographed my name on behalf of the L of my LLC. And so it's in the name of my LLC. So I took that, that, um, that, that, that uh, that title to the title tag office, I, mean, I was able to get registration in the name of that LLC. So because the LLC now owns that property. Okay. I'll probably pause this video in a second because I'm going through a car wash and I don't want no, uh, no distractions. <laughs> but uh, that's pretty much, that's the gist of it on how to change ownership, how to change ownership of a, of a you know, a property to another. It's just the same, it's the same concept. Now I'm going to tell you about a, a grant deed in a minute. What? <laughs> Y'all tripping. Okay, back to business. <laughs> okay, now, um, 
just say you have property that you don't have a deed or you don't have a certificate of trust, not certificate of trust, uh, a certificate of title or whatever for, and you want to convey it into your trust, say a gun, you know, as a serial number on it, you can actually create like, this is just an example. Okay. You can do this with any kind of property, pretty much most of any kind of tangible property. Um, and you can put anything in a trust, you know, anything of value in a trust. Um, you can put, um, you know, a will, a power of attorney, uh, you know, bonds, stocks, insurance. You can place these type of things in a trust simply by conveying it, you know. Um, but I'm using a, a basic example, like say if you're using a, you know, a, a, a title or whatever, you can use a deed, a grant deed, or a quick claim deed. I think it was a quick claim or whatever. Well, I forgot the kind of deed, but I know I used a grant deed before. Um, and you can actually Google a grant deed on the internet. You can get a template on the internet and you just, it's really basic where you pretty much conveying it, you know, from, you know, when you see the breakdown of one, how one goes, it pretty, pretty much shows that, um, the entity is basically making a statement where they're convey, conveying the ownership of that property to another entity, you know, and there's, and they have a, a area spot in the deed where it's describing the property itself. Say, for instance, say you're talking about a gun and you are, you're describing, say it's a nine millimeter, um, you know, Smith and Wesson, um, you know, extended clips, whatever the hell you did, de describe it, you know, it with as many detail as possible. Um, you don't have to be like over too much detail, but the, the basic details of it, if it has a serial number, you make sure you put the serial number on there, on, number on there, then, you know, little stuff like that to, to identify that item that you're that property that you're actually placing in the ownership of it. And once you're done with that thing, you look at your template, you look at your templates, you'll see exactly, it's real simple. And then you get it notarized, you get it notarized and recorded in the county recorder's office. And now you got prima facie evidence that the property actually belongs to that other entity. Okay, so that's what, that's an example of how to actually put something, <laughs> put something into a, a, you know, a trust. You know, so that's that's one way you can do that. Now, I'm, I'm like, once I did, I go as far, I go further than that. Once I do that, I'll then I'll do a UCC one on it, uh, making my uh, my trust the secure party and the straw man. You know, the straw man being the the debtor, and you place in the collateral everything that you named in your schedule A or your trust. Everything that's in your trust, you name it in the collateral. You know, it's pretty simple. That's pretty much how I did it. You know, I'm just giving a basic breakdown of what I did. But, um, you know, I said I wasn't going to put this kind of, I wasn't going to say all this on the internet, but fuck it. <laughs> Let folks know what the fuck you doing. You know, so, that, you know, people can know how to use this type of stuff. People who've already, who've already studied this stuff know how to do this stuff. They, 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 had a, they just want to know where to start, why they'll do it, you know. You know, so these type of things, once you do a UCC one on it, you create the trust first. Get all your property in the trust. Get your trust created. And there's no formal way of creating a trust. You know, there's no formality of it. Of course, as long as you got a trust, a trustee, a grantor, or, you know, um, what they call it, a grantor, or what they call it. A, mm. Anyway, I'm going to say grantor, trustee, and a beneficiary. You know, you got to have that. It, it's not a trust if you don't have those three entities, those three in there. Um, and you and you have to, and it's not a trust if you don't have property in it. Some type of something of value in there, inside the trust. And then once you once you got that, you got those things. You can create a trust. It's easy. But uh, and then the the rules and regulations, the laws that actually govern that trust. You have to name that stuff inside that trust. You know, you got to name the trustees. You got to name you know the the powers and the limitations of the trustees. Um, who the beneficiary is. You know, stuff like that. You know. Um, pretty simple, but I just, I'm pretty much making this video pretty much so you understand what it means by when somebody say, you got to put your, you got to put your property and put your straw man inside the trust. And they say, put, they use the word put as if it's, I put this over here <laughs> and it's not that simple, you know? And so it used to confuse me when I used to hear it and I didn't, you know, I, I didn't, nobody could really explain it to me at first. I had to look that up myself and figure it out. You know, so they will be like, just name it in the Schedule A, and it's that simple. And it's not that simple. We just name something in a in a Schedule A. I don't think it's that simple. It could be that simple, but like if somebody like you say that this, you have this in here, prove that. 
Where is the where is the uh, the the title to that? Where is the proof to that? You say you got this car. You name this car in here. Where is the title of that car? And if you pull that, you you present that title. Say if you present that title, and that car that title is in the straw man's name. You really don't have proof that 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 that, that trust actually owns that V that car because it's in the, it's in the name of the straw man. It's not in the name of the trust. So. I thought I'd just kind of make this video, you know, you create stuff like that. You can actually go to the county recorder's office, get a, a certified copy of that filing, that grant deed that you created. And you got proof right there that you that is 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 being conveyed. That's what the that's what the the um, that's what a, a, a deed is for. It's for con the, the conveyance of property. That's what a deed is for. So I thought I'd make this video. If you haven't liked and subscribe, take the time to do so now. Um <laughs> Uh, and, sh and feel free to share these videos, okay? Give me a comment, any comments or questions. Hit me in the comment section, and I I answer as much as I you know as much as I could, y'all. And so um, I try to keep up with with what's going on because I'm really trying to pull out the information and you know see what I can do to help people out. So um, if you got any questions, comments, hit me up, and I'll see you on the next video. Emro signing out.